peace, heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hi everybody, I'm Cheryl Tally Moss, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how to grow bush peas in a container and how to amend and use old potty mix. And last but not least, I'm going to share some of my motion lights with you that are solar powered. Okay. Let's get started. Here are some peas that I grew last year. I saved some seeds. Okay, guys, it's a uh, Saturday morning, about 5.30 in the morning, March the 28th. The first thing I did was shell the peas. And then I got some tepid water and I'm gonna put the peas inside this bowl with tepid water. And because these are dried out, it'll give them a little moisture. And also, it would tell me which seeds are viable. So I'm gonna let these sit for several hours. I have a couple of peas hiding under there. And then I'll come back and we'll see which seeds are not viable. And we can tell that by the ones that are floating at the top. Usually that's all you can tell. Okay, I'll be back. Hey guys, it's around 7.30 and I'm checking the beans. Now, you don't have to wait, that's just debris. You don't have to wait two hours for this test. You can check and see what's floating at the top after 15 minutes. And I see a few. And I'm not gonna, that's just debris, but from the shell. Um, I'm not gonna waste my time planting seeds that are not viable. So these have soaked and they will all go into a container. Now I'm gonna show you something about my hands. They're always a little ashy. You all know what I mean when it's depleted of oil. That's because I just got through washing my coffee cup and making my uh, sink full of uh, dish detergent, and a little bleach. So it dries out your hands. So me going in and out of the house, I keep washing my hands. So if you see my ashy, ashy hands, especially like right there, that's because I'm washing them in bleach, guys. I'm not taking any chances. If this virus is airborne, I don't know. All I know is my classmate is in the hospital in L.A. He's on a respirator because he has the virus. And so we could take precautions, but, you know, and we listen to the medical experts. But even at home, I am treating my hands and environment at home as if somebody's been in my home and could have left the, the virus. Guys, I want to share something with you. Sometimes what you need is right in front of your face. You know, I told you I didn't want to go buy more soil. And this tote has been sitting by my back door. It is compost, guys. Compost. And in that one over there, too. You get so busy cleaning up, you just forget. I've been walking by it every day thinking it was empty. Also, <laughs> I found these two. Uh, actually, it's three nice size containers that I got for $1.99 at the container store. They were sitting inside of this tote. 
God is good. I, <laughs> everything I need is right here. Now, Okay, guys, I drilled drainage holes at the bottom of each of these three containers, and then I added some fresh compost, including the peas that I shelled. So, I always try, when I can, to add a little compost at the bottom of my containers. So, here's the compost. I'm going to add a little biochar. I buy this from Amazon. It helps to retain the nutrients, reduces the need for watering, and it also improves the biodiversity of your plants and help you have a, a bigger yield. Now, those of you that live in the rural areas or in smaller towns where burning wood is permitted, you don't have to do this, but we can't burn anything in this suburb that I live in. So I'm going to add just a little by the char, about a half a cup. And because this soil was used before, it already has some pearl light in it. And I talk about this all the time in my videos. It will help with uh, drainage and, and retain moisture. And we're going to need this in the summer with our very hot hot triple digit temperatures in north texas so i'm going to add about a cup of this and then i'm going to add two cups of worm casting if you look down here you'll see the npk is one zero zero so that means it has more nitrogen than anything else worm poo that's what worm castings are. So, since I'm growing beans, or actually peas, and it's the same category, I'm going to add about three cups of worm castings. I'll come back after I have it, have it all mixed up and put into the containers. Okay, so I mixed up the soil amendments, and then I filled up the containers, and I put a little tray that I have up under here to catch the excess water when it rains. And I'm now, um, I have watered them in. Now I'm going to plant the peas. Peas should be planted about one inch deep and about two to three inches apart. But because this is my emergency coronavirus inspired garden, I'm going to plant the peas a little more dense. Okay, so I'm hoping that the peas will grow up and then spill over on the sides. But they are a bush type that don't have long vines. So here's my little straw, mason cup straw that I use. And that's a little bit more than an inch, so I'm going to just press down to that rim. See that? About two inches apart. And then I would just drop, it's right there, I'll just drop the pea in there. And I'm going to go around in a circle of motion, around and around. Here I go. Okay, and then I'm going to start in between the two holes. See this one right here and here? Then we'll put a pea here. So in between the two, we'll put another row. Make sense? Mm -mm, got a little off somehow right in here. A little off. It's okay. It doesn't have to be exact. That's the beauty of gardening. Nothing's going to be perfect. Now I'm going to establish another row in between those two holes. And then I'll put one or two right here. Okay. So I'm just going to drop the peas in. Okay, put 
pushing just slightly down. I don't have to push down a lot because I'm going to put an inch or two of potty mix over it. Because you can put them two inches down if you're living in a real hot climate like me. Our summers get brutal. One year we have 15 days in a row of 108 degrees. And I'm telling you guys, I couldn't hardly go outside. Before I can get to the car and have the air conditioning on, oh, it was murder. I, I get real nauseous and my nose start to bleed when I get overheated like that. Well, that was a miserable summer a few years ago. So I would have to get up every day early in the morning and do all of my gardening work. Because when we have temperatures like that, it's still over 100 degrees at night. So I would do everything I needed to do early in the morning. Is that one right there? I think so. Okay. And like I said, gardening is not a perfect art. I think that's what's so beautiful about it. Okay. So now, I am going to move this out of the way. And... Get me some potty mix, make sure no lumps are in it, and just sprinkle it over. About an inch and a half, two inches of soil. Okay, then we're going to pat down and then we're going to lightly mist it across the top. Okay, I've got them all planted. And I have these mini peas left. I'm gonna find a container to put them in because remember, I'm giving these away. And I'm gonna keep some for myself, but um, I'll find another container to plant the rest of those in. So now I'm just gonna lightly mix it with water because it's already been watered. Why are you growing it, old lady? <laughs> because I'm old. draining good and I'm just gonna mash it down so the birds won't try to come and get my peas and then I'll find a place to put them in the garden but I'm gonna take a uh, paper towel and water and clean the pots up some and uh, I'll find a place for them and I will be bringing you updates in addition to the three containers I have with peas in them, I was able to get these two coolers filled. So these coolers were normally $20 and I got them on sale at Family Dollar four, five, six years ago for $2 each because they were 90% off. And they have no holes in them, but they have a um, drainage hole on the back of them. Let me get closer. Turn it if you see that right there. See that? The water comes out there. So they are good to plant in, in the Texas heat. I just want to share a few of my solar lights and how it illuminates my garden at night. All of the lights that you're looking at, even way over there in that corner, all of these are solar and they don't cost any energy whatsoever. Some of them are motion so that when you come close, They'll come on and some of them get brighter. Even in that far corner, that little light that you see is a motion light. I'm going to go around here to my side yard. And, and you'll just see how it's going to light up. I've been accumulating these lights for a couple years now. And I really enjoy them. There's one behind the greenhouse. It's 
so I don't have any electricity on at all right now you see how I just came close to that one and this one is not coming on for some reason probably didn't have it charged or sitting in the sun okay my goal is to have all of my junk cleaned up out here in a couple weeks else here's some lights here when i'm just sitting outside yeah if you like this video please hit the subscribe button and the like button and share it with your friends the end <laughs>